Greetings all, Last Outrider here with another interesting video. This time, my topic, how to stop the fighting in Ukraine. And a very easy lesson. In this video, I will spell out a strategy exactly how to stop all fighting and repel Russian invaders from Ukraine within a few weeks or months at most. And you're saying, yeah, right. Really? Okay. I'll prove it. There is only one way <clears throat> to repel the Russian army in the situation that Ukraine is in. Think of this as, as if I had used the Codex Astarte where you feed in all of the information and you the, and it gives you back the tactical solution that is statistically most likely to win in your situation. In this situation, Ukraine is vastly outnumbered and outmaneuvered by an enemy that will simply, even in a war of attrition, will eventually win. In this case, a war of force simply cannot succeed. Fortunately, there are other types of war other than using force nonviolent war or civil resistance as it might be called in some place and before you laugh at me about this I will remind you that India defeated the United Kingdom and repelled them from the country and gained their independence using these exact tactics so I'd say that's a pretty good example of victory. That is exactly what must be done here in Ukraine. President Zelensky cannot win this battle by force of arms. So what can he do? He can throw a party. It's not a joke. Imagine if Zelensky got on YouTube or every television station in Europe and the US and Asia and said, hey, we're having a Coachello, Burning Man, Lollapalooza, uh, music festival of the world in Ukraine next week. Everybody is invited. Bring food, bring tents, Bring your RV, your caravan, whatever you want. We want every major city in Ukraine to be populated by tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. Every street lined with tents and campers. We're going to invite artists and musicians and bands from around the world to give concerts here, live, for free, come one, come all. Sound crazy? Does it? Imagine every major city in Ukraine filled with campers, non-violent protesters to the Russian invasion. Every city every street filled bring the refugees back with people and with like I said instead of worrying about where you're gonna get 10 billion in humanitarian aid just ask every person to bring it's a potluck whatever their own uh, uh, you know donation personally in their vehicles whatever and then camp out in the cities Burning Man is 75,000 people, and they get that with ease. So you can, I mean, so far they got 20,000 uh, volunteers of foreign fighters. I guarantee you, you could get 200,000 
volunteers for people to simply non-violently protest in the street. Just line the streets of the cities, every major city starting with Kiev. Okay? Do nothing. Just sit there and camp. Do you think Russia would drop a bomb on them? And if they did, there will be a thousand cell phone cameras circling around documenting every single thing that happened. He's sitting, he has given his chance to advocate for violent resistance. It's not working. The world has said they don't want to start World War III. Fine. No problem. Then I think it's time for a nonviolent protest. Get 200,000, 300,000, 500,000 people, or just bring the refugees back and get 2 million. Get everybody just to move to Ukraine for a month. Seriously, imagine all the people you could get from all across Europe and the U.S. and Asia just driving into Ukraine, parking on the streets, pulling out a tent, lying down on the ground and saying, pulling out a barbecue and saying, yeah, I'm just going to sit here in the middle of this road. I'm bet, and, and I bet you could get virtually every celebrity imaginable to donate their time to come and, uh, you know, give a concert or make an appearance or walk around, sign autographs, or whatever, which would get even more people. You could make this the largest music, art, slash, protest event in human history across Ukraine. Two million people show back up, camp out in the middle of the streets, and just sit there for a month. What would Russia do? Drive tanks over them, shoot them, bomb them. I, I don't even think Putin could do that. And if he did, then replace them. But okay, he's threatening us with World War III anyway. I mean, that's why everybody is paralyzed to act, right? Oh my God! If we do anything, it could be World War III. Well, fuck it. He's already threatening the world with annihilation, so what have you got to lose? Camp out in the cities. By the millions. Just occupy, counter-occupy Ukraine. Every street, every bombed out building, every, every government building, every road just lined with people. And bring whatever food and water you have, by the way, too, because that'll be helpful. Just set up tent cities and invite all the refugees back and bring them all back with Europeans. Instead of everybody leaving Ukraine, everybody move into Ukraine. And live in the streets for a month. Make it a festival. What will the Russian army do? Drive, like I said, drive over people, bomb people, shoot everybody sitting there from all the citizens from all over the world with everyone having a smartphone filming it at the same time. I don't see that happening. Ukraine has to take control. Right now, Putin feels He's in control. You occupy the streets like this, and Zelensky is the one who will have control. And eventually, just like with the UK in India, they'll just turn around and leave. Because they don't have the control. Because now, instead of just bombing Ukraine, they will bomb. They'll already be bombing the world, literally, if, if citizens from all over are sitting there. So, and if that happens, then just bring more people, like I said. 
Um, I think you'll get far more nonviolent volunteers to join, you know, Ukraine's, <laughs> instead of foreign military legion, foreign peace legion, to go there and then also offer all of those people, you know, the hero of Ukraine title and whatever. You know what I'm saying? Volunteers. But instead of running up there and saying, we'll give you a gun, just say, hey, everybody, come in. Live in the cities. Live here. Live everywhere you can. We will just, instead of pouring into $800 million more of military aid, you can hit $800 million more, I don't know, of food. Medicine, camping supplies, water. You know what I mean? Imagine that. Oh, my God. What if the United States actually gave $800 million worth of hot dogs <laughs> and hamburgers and food and camping supplies to a whole bunch of occupiers who were just going to sit in the streets for a month instead of javelin and stinger missiles? This would work. And quite honestly, it's the only way I think of, I can see, statistically speaking, of uh, saving Ukraine. Just think about it for a second. Imagine how many people would volunteer, how many celebrities would volunteer, how many politicians. Could you imagine, you know, uh, prime ministers and uh, members of parliament or whatever all just coming down and sitting around and if the royal families of Europe had the tits to do so also just camping out maybe the uh, in all of the cities with all of the protesters saying okay go ahead you're gonna drop a bomb on us Putin huh no, he won't, because there's nothing to gain from that. There's no bluff to call. Even if he did do it, just, just bring in more people to replace that. What's he going to do? <sighs> that. Turn Ukraine into the world's country. And the invasion is over. That's my suggestion. And until next time, bye. <laughs>